Happy Friday, eighth grade. Um, so today we're going to start talking about chemistry again. Um, we're just going to do a review of all the things we've been doing so far with chemistry to just uh, make sure that we're really cementing in all of these ideas. So let's start by talking about atoms. Atoms are made up of a nucleus. <clears throat> the nucleus is where the protons and the electrons are held. The protons and, I'm sorry, the protons and the neutrons are held. The protons and the neutrons are in the nucleus. <clears throat> the electrons orbit around the nucleus, and we call this area the electron cloud. There's 118 different kinds of atoms, and they all differ because of their own unique number of subatomic particles. When we talk about subatomic particles, we're talking about the protons, the neutrons, and the electrons, these small particles that make up the atom. So if you look at the structure of the atom in the nucleus, you have the protons and the neutrons while the electrons float around. And you'll notice that there's quite a size difference between this proton and neutron and the little tiny electron. So the proton is a large particle that's found in the nucleus of the atom, and they have a positive charge. Proton equals positive. And the neutron is a large particle that's also found in the nucleus, and they have a neutral charge or no charge. Neutron equals no charge or neutral. The electrons are really, really small particles that are found in the electron cloud that surrounds the nucleus. So they kind of float on the outside of the nucleus and aren't in that more compacted area. The electrons have a negative charge. So the um, remember, electron, negative charge. So when we talk about the elements, um, first we talk about something called matter. And matter is everything that surrounds you. And it's only composed of one type of atom. Anything that's considered an element is only composed of one type of atom. It's either all carbon, all nitrogen, all helium. The elements are arra arranged by characteristics on what we call the periodic table, which all of you have in your placemat form. So the um, atomic number up here, which we see for carbon is six, tells us the number of electrons and the number of protons for this atom, as long as it is balanced. The number of neutrons um, round the atomic this atomic mass, and then you subtract the atomic number. So in this case, you would take this 12, which would round to this 12.01, which would just become 12, and you subtract 6, which means you have 6 neutrons. And the number of electrons in a balanced atom, like we said, is the atomic number as well, just like the number of protons. The number of protons have to equal the number of electrons so that the, if the element is balanced and not considered an ion. Just a quick reminder again, atomic number, number of protons and electrons, the symbol, the name, and then the atomic mass, which is the mass of all of those subatomic particles put together. So let's move on to talk about what an ion is. It's an atom or a group of atoms where the number of electrons doesn't equal the number of protons. So if you see a shift in that number of electrons, it becomes an ion. And it can be either positively charged or a negatively charged ion. How are these formed? So the only thing that an, um, an atom can gain or lose is the electron. The number of protons always stays the same unless you're actually changing from one element to another. So they can only gain or lose electrons. And losing electrons would equal positive charge because you're losing those negatively charged subatomic particles. And gaining electrons would give you a negative charge because now you have a lot more of the negative subatomic particles, which brings a negative charge to that ion. So how do we actually determine their charge? The number of electrons gained or lost determines the actual magnitude of the ion's charge. So the periodic table can actually help you to predict what ions an element will make. Some tend to be a little bit weaker and can lose electrons much more easier. Some tend to have a much stronger pull and they can gain electrons more easily. So if you were to look at this, this atom would be considered neutral because the number of um, protons, or these positively charged subatomic particles, is equal to the number of electrons. This atom would be considered positive because you'll notice that there's two positives and a negative. 
and this atom would be considered negative because there's only two positives and there's three negatives surrounding it. Let's move on to talk about something we talked about recently called phase changes. There's three different phases of matter. There's solid, liquid, and gas. And there's also something called a phase transition, and this is when the energy forces of the atom start to change its actual state. So if you're going from a solid to a liquid, you have a period or this transition period of melting. If you're going from a liquid to a gas, you're going through evaporation. If you're going from a gas to a liquid, it's condensation. And if you're going from a liquid to a solid, it's freezing. So these are for um, just for water. At zero degrees, ice, ice can start to melt, but this, and this is considered the freezing point. This is when ice can start to form and ice can start to melt, and we're in this equilibrium. At 100 degrees, water boils, so this is considered the boiling point. And the flat line means that all the atoms have to wait before changing states. So anytime that you have a flat line on the graph, it's showing a period of equilibrium. And what that means is that during that time, there's still some in the liquid phase and there's still some in the gas phase or whatever two phases were in between. And as we add or remove energy, heat energy from that, it has more and more atoms either becoming gas or becoming liquid. The atoms and the molecules are always in motion and the amount of motion they're in is dependent upon the actual state of matter. So solid tends to have a, the least amount of energy and but they are vibrating in place. Liquid has a little bit more than that and the, the atoms are moving and gas has the most amount of energy where they're moving really quickly. So if you look at this graph we have the solids, the liquids, and the gas. And one thing to notice is these flat lines, which shows this period of equilibrium. So in this per period right here, you still have some solid and you have some liquid. So you're trying to get to the liquid. Once you hit this point where it goes up, that's when everything is now liquid. As temperature and energy increases, you flatline again. And this is another period of equilibrium where we're in between a liquid and a gas. So there's some gas being produced. Once you get here, all of the atoms are in the gas phase. Go ahead and move on to your practice today in your packet. Once you're done with it, you may go on your um, exit ticket and your, chemi your chemistry quizlet.